will buy to let work in 2024? Landlords are selling up in droves, so the newspapers say. How is the buy to let market evolving and what are the opportunities for savvy property entrepreneurs in 2024? Now, there's a lot of bad news in the media about buy to let, landlords selling up, new taxes, new regulations, new this and that all the time. But to explore this a bit further, we need to look at why landlords are selling, what sorts of properties they're selling, and where the opportunities are for new investors or existing investors who are switching their portfolios to more meaningful investments as they decide what to do in 2024. Now, out of all the rental property out there, more than half of them are owned by individuals who never set out to do property renting as a business. They're accidental landlords. They owned a property in a particular place, then uh, life circumstances changed for them. They moved somewhere else and decided to keep their old property and rent it out. Those folks are the accidental landlords. There are others that never intended to build a portfolio as a business, but just wanted to buy two or three properties and they bought them in their own name, perhaps as a pension or a long-term investment. Now, thanks to Section 24, which is a new tax treatment of mortgage interest, that has completely changed the game for those accidental landlords and property investors who had a few properties in their own individual name. Because what's happened to those guys is that they are now unable to deduct their mortgage interest as a business expense from running their rental portfolio. Now, while interest rates were super low, this didn't actually matter that much or had less of an impact for many of these smaller landlords. But as interests have shot up so much in the last year, many of these smaller landlords have seen their interest rate bill double or treble. And of course, mortgage interest is the biggest expense for a buy-to-let landlord. And if you can't claim that as an expense against your tax, then you're in a very, very bad position and often in a, in a cash flow negative position. Now, of course, if you are a new investor and you're seeking to do this professionally as a business, you will be buying your properties in a limited company straight from the bat and you won't be subject to this Section 24 tax. If you have a larger portfolio in your own name, then you, you may be able to move that into a limited company by a process called incorporation, which of course your tax advisor will advise you on. But that still leaves a lot of accidental landlords and smaller landlords very exposed because each month some of their properties are actually cash flow negative. Now this graph produced by Savills shows the impact on highly geared buy-to-let investors, people that have got 70% loan to value or more. And it shows for the first time since 2007, these guys are actually in negative cash flow. So what we are seeing is a sell up, a sell up from smaller landlords who don't have the option to incorporate and benefit from mortgage interest deductibility as a business expense. We're seeing an exit of people who were highly geared and the interest rate situation is now meaning that their buy-to-let property is actually making a loss. And the other group we're seeing an exit from is the older landlord. And we always see an exit of older landlords when prices soften. If you think about it, if someone got into the market 20 years ago and they're now 65 years old or something, they've already built up quite a lot of equity and profit in their property investments. If the market is softening now, it's going to be another 10 years before it is in full swing boom again. And when you reach a certain age, you want to cash in your chips and sit on a beach rather than wait for that next uptick in the cycle. The other reason why people sell off is simply because they're not producing a decent return on the equity or the cash they have tied up in a property. Now, another big reason why people are selling, and quite frankly, I don't think anyone's actually talking about this, is this, and this is very important to understand. Buy-to-let works with leverage. Now, that means that you don't, if, you, if you're buying a 100,000 pound property, you're not gonna put 100 grand in. You wanna put in less of your own money and get the bank to put up the rest. Because ultimately, what you're looking at is, well, how much positive cash flow are you making each month? And what is the return 
you're making on the cash that you have got tied up in that property. Now, if you take an investor who bought 20 years ago, that property has gone up in value significantly. And they may have maybe a couple of hundred thousand pound tied up in that property in terms of equity. Then when you look at the return, after all costs, what is the positive cash flow you're making on an annual basis? And you divide that by the equity or the cash that you've got tied up in the property now. You may feel that because we are looking at a slump for the next few years, it is simply not worth tying up that much equity in that property for that return that you're getting. And a lot of people, particularly people that have been in the game for 10, 20 years, decide to cash in their chips at times in the cycle like this. But of course, all those factors don't affect new investors or people at the beginning of their property investing career. Are you struggling to find your next commercial to residential conversion project? Well, over the next two years, virtually every UK bank branch will close. Banks are fabulous buildings in prime locations and thanks to permitted development rights, they're really easy to convert to alternative uses under a light touch planning regime. My team have put together a list of over 500 UK bank branches which are poised for imminent closure. And for a limited period only, you can download this list absolutely free. Your next commercial property project is on this list. So download it now and enjoy the rest of the video. What you need to do is take stock of what the landscape is now and look at what will work going forward in 2024 and beyond. Now what won't work is the kind of stuff that people did 20 years ago, which was vanilla buy to let. Vanilla buy to let is when you just take a property and pretty much rent it out on a single assured shorthold tenancy agreement to one group of tenant or family and the like. Now in the south of England and in high value areas, this simply doesn't work anymore. It does work in some northern towns, but the problem with those sort of areas is although you can get positive cash flow, you won't get as much capital appreciation going forward. And of course, one uh, broken boiler or such can mean that one year's positive cash flow is simply wiped out. What will work in 2024 in terms of buy-to-let are multi-unit freeholds where you've got multiple lettable units under one building. So that can be a house in multiple occupation where you're renting out individual rooms. That can be a freehold building which is split into a number of flats. That can be a mixed-use commercial building with residential usage as well. And it can also be a defunct commercial building, which you use permitted development rights on to convert into residential use. So you can make it into multiple smaller flats to keep for long-term rental. Well, where do you find these sort of opportunities? Well, property auctions are a fantastic source. Just a couple of years ago, Auction House London used to just have a hundred lots in their catalog. These days now, they've got more than 300. That reflects what I've been saying in many other videos. It's a buyer's market. And in a buyer's market where there are more buyers and sellers, people have to sell at auctions and there are more properties available to sell at auctions. In times of boom, the auction market goes mad. And actually people are overpaying, they're getting caught up in the sentiment and overpaying for property at auctions. In times like this, of course, it's the other way. And there are plenty of bargains to be had on the day of the auction, but also after the auction. Because not every property that's offered for sale at auction actually sells. A great strategy right now is to look at unsold lots at auctions and see whether any of those meet your investing criteria. Because if you think about it, think about it from the seller's point of view. You've tried to sell your property. You've gone for auction. You know, no bidder in the room wanted it. Where do you go from there? So at that point in time, the vendor's mindset is all ears to offers. Direct-to-vendor marketing works exceptionally well, where you approach vendors who are looking to sell their properties and basically buy those properties off market. And by buying them off market, you can be a far more creative with the way you structure the deal. More on that in future videos. 
and go on Rightmove and look for properties that have been on the market for three months or more. You see, when you first put your property on the market, you're full of hope. You reckon something's going to happen in the first week and all of that. But when it doesn't happen, the fact that it's been on the market for three months or more means that that has had an effect on your psychology as a seller. Is anyone going to buy it? Is anyone actually going to be interested in it? Am I going to be able to make a sale of this property so I can move on to the next stage of my life? Because that sale is holding me up. And at that three month time point when a property has been on sale and it hasn't found a buyer, that's when people start to uh, entertain creative offers and sensibly priced offers. And the other thing that will be very big in 2024 and beyond is the amount of sale transactions that will actually fall through the net. Just because someone's offered on something, it doesn't necessarily mean they'll sell their house if they're in a chain or actually get a mortgage to buy the one that they're looking at buying. So a lot of properties are going to fall through the net. And because of the slow buying process in the UK, it can be two or three months before you find, find out that a sale has fallen through and you're back to the starting block again. If that happens a couple of times to you, then as a seller, you're quite fed up. And if an investor uh, who is not in a chain has funding arranged and is looking to buy the property and go forward with the deal without letting that seller down, then you'll tend to find that they will accept a compromise in terms of price just to get that property sold. Now, what's going to be the right strategy to follow in 2024 is going to be a common theme of the videos that we put out. So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you're notified when we put out new content. And let me know what you think of this in the comments below. So to sum up then, buy to let will not work for some property investors and also for some types of properties. But if you're clued up with the right knowledge of what to do and take advantage of the market conditions today, which of course are quite different from five years, 10 years and 15 years ago, then your strategy, your investment strategy is optimized for the market conditions of today. And that's what you need to be make sure you're doing, not investing according to what someone is telling you they did five years ago, but what's working right now in the current market. And that's what we share with you on this channel. So make sure you subscribe, follow us for more and see you guys in the next video. The Baker Street Property Meet is the UK's largest and number one property investors networking event. The property market is going through monumental change right now and at Baker Street Property Meet we aim to keep you up to date with the latest tips and tricks and insider tactics to help you keep on top of your property investing game and succeed in these troubled economic times. The Baker Street Property Meet is fundamentally about networking because it's not what you know, it's who you know. And at Baker Street, we aim to connect you with the people to make your property journey a monumental success. There's no better place to be to further your property investment journey than the Baker Street Property Meet. So make sure you're here, you're connecting with myself and Andrew Roberts, our expert guest speakers and 300 passionate property people each and every month. See you at the next meet. Get your spot at bakerstreetpropertymeet.com.